Hi folks, Steve here and let's talk through Java Panahi's This Is Not A Film. Um, I just want to start by reading you a quote. Of course, um, this film is kind of illegally made because um, Panahi was banned from filmmaking for 20 years. He's, um, if you don't know who Panahi is, he's a, a very prominent and popular, like globally popular, um, uh, Iranian filmmaker. And if you want to see some of his films, his excellent filmmaker, uh, The Circle and Offside are my personal favourites. But most of his films now are able to be streamed on YouTube. So if you're interested in Panahi, I highly recommend that you have a look at his work. He's a really, really fantastic filmmaker. But um, he was banned from filmmaking uh, by the Iranian government for 20 years for making um, what they termed as subversive um, uh, films, uh, which was sort of anti-Iranian government and society. And of course, um, he's fighting these charges, he wants to make movies, and the whole film is sort of documenting this. Now, he made this film sort of illegally, on um, sort of shot uh, uh, predominantly on an iPhone, and then the film was smuggled out of Iran in a cake and sent to the Cannes Film Festival um, where it played and it you know received a glowing response um, when uh, it was sort of screened at the Cannes Film Festival. It also uh, screened at the Berlin Film Festival and Isabella Rossellini uh, read a letter at the screening by Panahi and this is what the letter said, or part of what the letter said. They have deprived me of seeing the world for 20 years. For the next 20 years, I'm forced to be silent. I'm forced not to be able to see. I'm forced not to be able to think. I'm forced not to be able to make films. Now, that may seem a little melodramatic, um, but you've got to understand that Panahi is a, you know, he is a filmmaker and what gets him out of bed every morning morning and what he loves to do and what he lives to do is to make movies so to deprive him of his art is an extremely traumatic thing to do and across the film i mean although it's it's political in many senses it's it's actually a film about a man and a man trying to keep himself together because He's, he's been robbed of the thing that is so important to him. And it's a very sad and poignant film because of that, because that, you know, he is simply not able to make movies. And how that film kind of um, uh, discusses that and sort of comes to terms with that. And Panahi being the, the star of the film is very much... Um, involved in this conversation and he wants to have that conversation across the film in that you know art art isn't just something that people do art is actually something that people need to do and we need art in the world and we need artists in the world we need to consume art and we need to produce art okay so like I said uh, he's been for 20 years the film was smuggled out on a USB stick hidden in a cake um, when you're thinking about the film, think about what type of release pattern, uh, you know, how you distribute the film um, would be appropriate. Like, should the film play in multiplexes, in art cinemas, you know, video on demand? What sort of film is it? Of course, it's called This Is Not A Film. And for a very cinematic filmmaker that he is, this is, you know, it's not cinematic in the sense that we know it's you know it's shot on an iPhone it's shot quickly it's shot rapidly it doesn't have the flowing cinematic edge of say um, you know any of Penny his other films or you know certainly many of the films that we've seen but when we're thinking about defining documentary I actually think that this film is a is a fascinating uh, definition of documentary because it's you know, it's documenting somebody just going about their business. It's it it's it's kind of suits what we think of documentary, and the way that we've um we've discussed documentary uh, certainly in this course. Um, 
sort of up to this point and trying to define a documentary and trying to redefine documentary in that you know there is no reenactments and things like this even though the interesting thing about the film because he's he's trying to make this film he was sort of half, halfway through this film when the band came in so in the film he's actually actually reenacts scenes from the film you know just himself um, which is kind of really interesting okay so I mean, what you've got is the director Nate narrating themselves, and there are a series of films where you know the director is kind of narrating themselves. Um, the obvious example would be uh, Margot Nash's *The Silences*, which again also takes a filmmaker thinking about their body of work and thinking about how the body of work somewhat illustrates um, particular aspects about their own personality. And in *This Is Not a Film*, these uh, clips from Panahi's other films uh, are shown and they're discussed. So when you're watching the film, think about what is the subject matter of the film. Like, what is this film actually about? Is it about a filmmaker not being able to make films and sort of trapped um, by by that idea? Is it a political film? You know, is it a film about Iran? Um, you know, think about. All of the all of the different things going on in the film, and you know what is the actual subject matter of this film. So it's as far as modes go, it is um, certainly participatory or interactive with these conventions. So the docu documentary maker and crew interact with the subject, even though the the documentary maker really is Panahi, and he is you know kind of interacting with the camera and uh, interacting with himself. Um, there is there's kind of interviews. You know, he sort of is speaking to the camera in a an interview kind of way, but the, you know the interview is very informal, and it's it's you know it is sort of the on the run um, kind of idea of um, interviewing, even though on the run being that he never actually leaves his um, his home. Um, it does appear, you know, it does feature archival material, like I said, with the use of his earlier films and how his identity is through that. Um, the handheld camera is kind of important because the film is very reflexive in it's constantly saying to you, this is a film, like even though it's called This Is Not A Film, it's constantly, you know, the handheld is reminding us always the shonkiness of the film, the cheapness of the film is constantly there to remind us of the political statement that the film's making, the situation that this director finds himself in where he is not allowed to make movies. And, of course, there are long takes um, that sort of dominate uh, across the, the film. It's interesting when we're talking about um, Bill Nichols' modes that perform performance and observation, you know, those two modes which often um, seem so distant in many regards, they're actually there. Um, so what you, what you actually have in the film is Panahi at times ignoring the camera and the camera just observing him sort of at work, as you would expect from an observational um, uh, film. But then uh, on, in other scenes, he, he performs it up to the camera. He knows the camera is there and he's giving a certain um, performance to the camera, speaking directly into the camera, um, which is really interesting. So the film does take on different modes, and um, I think that makes it really kind of fascinating. You might find those two modes and the differences a bit jarring, so just think about that uh, when you're watching it. Okay, so where is the subject filmed? The subject is filmed predominantly in his home. And think about the mise-en-scene. So when I say mise-en-scene, you know, all the things you can see in the shots. Um, he's very much a filmmaker. And often when he's being photographed, he's being photographed against, say, like, you know, his DVD collection or he's being photographed, um, you know, in front of his cameras, you know, whether it's just still picture cameras or moving picture cameras and things like this. The film is constantly saying to you, this guy is a filmmaker and he is being starved of his art and so think about um also the ordinariness of of um of his apartment that you know he's not this extravagantly rich guy who lives in this big mansion you know he, he 
it's not that sort of film. He's not that sort of filmmaker. And the film is trying to make that statement as well, that he's actually being deprived not only of his art, but of his livelihood. So think about the, the political connotations that that also has. Now, I'm asking the question, is this location political? And think about this location and how it does have political connotations. Now, of course, it's in a jail, but it is he is being filmed as somebody trapped. So the film is very insular. It doesn't, it's not very, it's not an open world, right? So it's not a world like um, many other documentaries where it starts with the subject or the social actor and then it sort of branches out into the other areas. The film isn't allowed to be objective because it's not like they can go and interview members of the government who have banned him from filmmaking because he's not even meant to be making this film, right? And the Iranian government were significantly pissed with him for making this film. The film is made pretty much as a video diary where we're looking at his daily routine and we're just sort of going through the world as he does. There's there's a sort of, it, it is somewhat monotonous parts of the film and it's meant to be because it's meant to say this guy should be out there making movies and instead he's kind of trapped in his own house. Now, how is the Panahi persona evident in these sequences? So think about what sort of social actor is he? How does he compare to other social actors examined uh, across the course? You know, what is similar about him and what isn't similar about him? He's an extremely uh, a quiet, internal and sort of kept uh, social actor, which is a little bit different to other social actors that we've seen. So think about how how um, how different he is and how this is sort of performing a sense of himself. But he's also, you know, he's an Iranian man and he's also, you know, playing, um, we're well, not playing that part, but he's also reflecting that aspect of his own nationality. So how's the film political? How's the film ethical? So the Iranian tradition is sort of saying things without appearing to have said them. So what you've got here is the film is not a rant. It's not a political rant. It's not explicit in that, right? It takes a more observational approach, right, in what the film's saying and what the film's doing. It's very subtle. Now, remember, if he was to make it a rant against the government, he would have been he would have been absolutely arrested and chucked into jail probably forever. So he had to be very, very careful in what he actually says. Now, what I'm asking is how would the film be different if it sort of employed the expository conventions? So what would happen if it had a, you know, a, a sort of voice of God um, voiceover addressing the audience's audience directly what would happen if say you know western film directors were cut into the film and they were talking about how significant panahi is or how outraged they were you know what if it took a more global perspective um what if images were used to illustrate or sometimes counterpoint the voiceover so when he's talking what if they showed the government at work um you know what if they what if they showed a variety of interviews and still and archival material, you know, outside of Panahi's own apartment? And what if it was explicitly trying to persuade the audience of something? How would that change? And would that actually make it less authentic, less ethical? Is the film ethical because it's it's a video diary of a person kind of going through this? Um, so it's sort of think about the modes, the choices that they've made with the modes and why they've made particular choices. So is this not a film, I'm saying? So the narrative is about not being able to make a film and there is a lot of conversations across the film about how do we actually make this film, right? So it's 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 very much, uh, you know, it's, it's very reflexive, but it's also kind of a deconstruction. It's kind of they're trying to deconstruct what a film is. Um, so the film essentially is a film about filmmaking because it's about filmmaker sitting around talking about filmmaking and wanting to do that but say so unlike say a Michael Moore film or you know a Nick Broomfield film depending on how you would um, consider those filmmakers where you know they're very much on camera you know the star of their films I would never say that this film is, is self-indulgent right and now Panahi he appears in the film on three levels as a political subject as an artistic subject as an ordinary subject now, what I mean by that, certainly 
by the 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 ordinary subject is it's a film that is about him and it's a film that's happening to him right now this differs to most of the film most of the documentaries that you will see most documentaries that you will see is something is happening to somebody else and the filmmaker is documenting that right now this film is actually about a guy who can't make films for 20 years and uh, there's a good chance he's going to go to jail, right? So because of that, because everything on that's actually happening in the film is happening to the filmmaker and the subject, right, the film is more personal and it's more autobiographical. It's also kind of more ethical because it's not like a filmmaker coming in and, you know, giving this sort of objective sort of idea of the film right or questioning or challenging the social actor because it's not them and they just don't get what's going on here here is the social actor who's in control of the film they're saying well it's my story and i'm going to tell my story and it's going to be an an unedited story right so all the roughness and rawness about the film is great in the way that we define it as a documentary but it's also very different and it's very challenging for us to watch it as documentary because we don't really watch documentaries that are so personal like this. So a uh, social actor is performing. How do social actors perform when accused of something? So think about other films, other social actors like, you know, Eileen, Life and Death of a Serial Killer or Capturing the Freedmans or The Thin Blue Line, you know, these famous films where social actors are literally on trial, on trial for their own innocence, and they're being accused of something, right? Now, what you have in those other films are uh, uh, the the social actors being extremely explicit in how they're discussing the the, the charges against them, right? Now, Panahi is in a very difficult situation because, again, he's not meant to be making this film. He's not meant to be talking about this. So he's careful not to say anything that would incriminate him. He doesn't attack the government directly. He attacks the government indirectly. And think about how he does that. He does that by doing things like, the government has stopped me from my livelihood. The government has stopped me from my art. The government has stopped me from doing the things I love to do. And all I want to do is make movies again. Right, so he's a desperate man crying for help. Right now, by doing that, he's actually making an attack directly against the government. So think about think about that and the subtlety of the film and how that is actually very effective. Think about how this compares to other social actors on trial. Um, like I said, okay. So just the final thought: some things to think about. Where is the subject filmed? How is he filmed? How is he shot? What is he filmed on? But being filmed on the, you know, the iPhone, you know, is a good example of this. The film is meant to look cheap and grainy for particular reasons. Think about the mise en scene. What kind of connotations does this have? You know, the apartment, him always being shot against cameras and screens and his movies being played and things like that. How is the location political of where we're seeing him, you know, in his apartment, you know, as somebody literally, it's as if he's under house arrest. It's as if he's in jail. He just, he can't escape because he can't be free to do his art. And how is the Panahi persona evident in these sequences? What sort of social actor is he, right? How would you define him as a social actor? Do you like him as a, as a social actor? Do you want to sort of root for him? Do you feel empathy for him, or are you, are you sort of, um, are you not persuaded by it? You know, I mean, the government obviously don't uh, appear in the film. So again, is the film balanced? Well, the film, I think, is as balanced as it can be, um, uh, because you know what, you just can't make it this a balanced film. It's going to have to be very, very subjective. But it's what, but but I think because. It's happening to him and it's about him. It is more ethical because it's his story told by him, which is very, very different to say, you know, other films like, say, Forbidden Lights, where a, a direct and a director comes in and actually is making the film very objectively. All right, I'll leave it there. Um, I think it's a really fascinating movie. It's a fascinating movie when we're thinking about ethics, um, thinking about definitions around documentaries and you know the different forms that a documentary can take all right i'll leave it there look forward to seeing you soon